Hi! Is up everybody, I'm no Lex Given here with your afternoon snap, and yesterday I showcased my Agatha Wiccan Scar deck and said it might not be the best Wiccan deck. However, today I'm here to potentially correct that record. It might be the best Wiccan deck. I'm still not totally sure. But I've been having a ton of success with this, and I thought this Conquest match was a great match to showcase because my opponent is also playing Wiccan, and they're playing what I thought might potentially be a better Wiccan deck. They're playing Wiccan Bounce, which is something I haven't personally gotten to try yet because as a free-to-play player, I didn't have access to Hawkeye Kate Bishop. But I think it's good because the deck very naturally is able to curve out and spend all of its energy on the first three turns of the game, which this deck has a little bit of a puzzle to, to put together, but other Wiccan decks could potentially struggle with. By the way, I'm retreating in this first game before uh, anybody snaps, just because I don't want to show my opponent the Zabu. I feel like it potentially gave away too much information there. What I didn't realize is if I had stayed in the game for one more turn, my opponent might have played their turn for Wiccan, and that information that I would have gotten from them might have been better than the information that I was giving to them. But either way, this next game is also pretty interesting, and I think I actually make a mistake this turn. I should have played Psylocke here. This is a really tricky maneuver, but if I play Psylocke, the next turn Agatha would have just played Quicksilver plus Zabu, but now Agatha has to make a 50-50, and she might not play the Psylocke here, which would have been awkward. However, she does. Agatha's great. Never doubted her. But it is a great example to illustrate my opponent's deck is much more smoothly and naturally able to curve out and in a variety of different situations. Tinkerer's Workshop is typically just a location that loses this deck the game because it means that you aren't able to curve out properly with the Quicksilver into Zabu or Psylocke into the turn three Wiccan. Whereas my opponent can easily make use of that extra energy. Now, doesn't wind up being a big deal here, but uh, definitely, I think, like, is an interesting point to think about, and it's why I thought that Bounce Wiccan might be a better home for the card. But the drawback is that Bounce decks do have a more difficult time capitalizing on the extra energy from Wiccan. So I think that's where this deck has the edge, and in this video, we're going to see who really has the edge in this matchup and who has the better Wicked deck. So turn four, Agatha is going to play the Scar into the Vault. Agatha MVP in this game, not going to lie, because uh, playing into the Vault is obviously really good here. And then my opponent plays the Wiccan, and that's when I realize, oh, you're a Wiccan deck too. I'm going to put my opponent's deck list on the screen in just a moment. That's why there's a slightly different layout for today's video. But I didn't want to start the video with that and overwhelm you with a bunch of information. We're going to wait till I know what my opponent's deck is in the video, if that makes sense, and then I'll throw it on screen here in just a moment. But my opponent is going to bounce all of those cards that they've set up with in negative zone, and I do dodge the Rocket Raccoon, but was wondering why they put the Hit Monkey out on turn three until they played the turn four Wiccan, and then it all made a lot more sense. Turn five, they played Bishop plus Beast, now this turn, Agatha plays herself into Tinkerer's Workshop. That looks good to me. I'm going to stay in it for four cubes, and I think we are doing it here. I don't think my opponent's going to be over able to overcome me in Tinkerer's Workshop, even with a large hit monkey, plus being able to dump a whole bunch of other cards. It is going to be a really big hit monkey, though. Let's take a look. Yeah, not quite big enough. 16 power. We are still definitely overcoming them in Tinker's Workshop until they play Grandmaster. Move over the Hit Monkey and steal the win in the Vault. I was really not expecting that. That's why I didn't want to reveal the deck list just yet, but here it is. I'll throw it on the screen now and we can see 
that uh, my opponent has Grandmaster in their deck and uh, they were able to get the win from me in that one. So awkwardly, with that surprising victory, I am now down five cubes, but I'm not out and we are going to do our best to claw our way back into this one and I think we still can because, I don't know, this deck is still pretty powerful and I think that if I can get off a lucky five cuber or four cuber, maybe I'll have to do that twice, but my deck does have a higher output than my opponent's deck. The Grandmaster with Cassandra and the hit monkey those are cool plays and oh they can also grandmaster the wicked that's pretty cool i don't know that my opponent's deck is 100 percent ideal just full transparency but it is uh definitely an interesting place to start for wicked bounce i am also tempted to put white widow in this deck that's actually why i personally haven't played it yet i think a little bit of a junk angle with the hawkeye kate bishop is pretty strong my opponent gets rid of the sinister lund in this game before i'm able to make use of it and then lemuria is going to delay if i had the turn three wicked which i don't so I'm just going to slam the Jubilee, and then I actually get the turn four Wiccan, but Agatha decides she is going to play a Crossbones instead, but it actually doesn't matter. I can play a turn five Wiccan if I really want to, and uh, like Wiccan will still be active. I've spent all of my energy every turn, so it'll still be a fine curve out, and I guess I'm just hoping for... I don't know. I guess I'm hoping for Scar. Uh, the, the cards left in my deck right now are Scar, Wave, and uh, uh, Cole Obsidian, and Eliath. So of those, we're going to get one with slightly less power here. Double slightly less power because of the Cassandra plus Grandmaster shenanigans my opponent's got going on. And then they are going to fill up the center location oh before moving over with the grapple arrow okay that makes sense i was like they don't want to uh junk themselves over an avengers compound and then i wave so now i also have the opportunity to just agatha into avengers compound which sets me up nicely because monster island and crossbones will then make scar free on the final turn of the game which i think i brought up this interaction potentially in yesterday's video uh but monster island being a common location does mean that you often get free scars just because of the monster plus playing two other scar cards which is always fun my opponent hits me with the rocket raccoon which means we'll have to drop Scar in the center, but that's easy power to make up. And then I can just Red Hulk over in Lemuria and I think I've got it. I'm going to take a look at one other thing. I could play Wiccan, which would then allow me to play Scar plus Zabu over into Lemuria, but that's actually less power than just playing Red Hulk there. So not going to do that. Just going to drop the Red Hulk into Lemuria by itself and they would have to have like shang chi in monster island plus uh, i don't know I, I can't come up with a way that my opponent can beat this i'm just thinking about all of the potential interactions here but i've already pressed the end turn button and my opponent's actually going to play it out here for the four cubes they had hit monkey which actually ties it up in monster island not quite going to be enough and this i think is really where i realized wait a minute I've got a chance here. If I can beat my opponent in two locations and the best that they can do is tie me in a location where I'm totally locked out, I think I might be able to actually win this matchup and I might actually have the better Wicked deck, more importantly. Here we've got a nice little curve of Quicksilver into Zabu and Rickety Bridge is kind of a tricky location here that might delay my snap because Agatha could always play herself into the rickety bridge and that would be a little bit awkward 
A pet mansion's good, that means uh, Agatha knows exactly where to play Zabu, and then turn three I'll have Jubilee. I don't think that this is still snap worthy, um, but I'll go Jubilee, could get the Jubilee. I think I actually, okay, spoiler alert, I think I do get the Jubilee into Wiccan interaction that I showed off in yesterday's uh, video is like a quick little intermission, but it does come up. I, I, I mean, it wasn't, I think this is good, like, to say, hey, I wasn't, that wasn't just, like, a crazy interaction. I, this has happened to me multiple times, where I turned three Jubilee into the Wiccan to get that perfect curve, and now I can wave on turn five after we Agatha on turn four. So, all of this is looking great, and Agatha doesn't play herself into the rickety bridge, so now I finally feel confident enough that I'm snapping, and my opponent snaps back. So, we're in for it here. This is not quite all the marbles, but at the same time still all the marbles. Whoever loses this is not going to have the enough cubes to put on pressure for the rest of the matchup, and we can see why my opponent snaps. They drew some junk, they drew debris off of Camp Lehigh, so that is going to significantly limit my ability to make plays for the rest of this one, because now I only have one real space left on the board. There is one other trick that I can do here, is that I can use Wave plus Psylocke to kind of clear out the rickety bridge, with the idea being that next turn I will continue to play into the rickety bridge. I know my opponent will as well, uh, but this way by playing into that location and clearing it out, uh, I have the opportunity to maybe still win that location on the final turn of the game, but I know my opponent's deck having a much lower curve they'll be able to play something into the rickety bridge on the final turn most assuredly and we'll see what that is in just a second my opponent has to think about their turns make a lot more decisions this deck is pretty straightforward which i think is a good recommendation for it if you just want to play a good deck this deck isn't going to necessarily make you better at playing marvel snap because i mean half of the turns Agatha is playing the deck for you, but it does give you an important opportunity to work on those fundamentals, like I said in yesterday's video as well. So, uh, yeah, there, there's definitely still some merit to it in that regard. I don't think Kitty Pride gets to bounce here again, yeah, because the Falcon may have... Oh no, it does get to bounce. Okay. So my opponent will be able to play that Kitty Pride plus a few other cards. I draw Eliath, so I'm going to play that instead of the Red Hulk. I think that Eliath is probably more power than Red Hulk at this point, but this is also a great example. You can see how Magneto might have been good in this Red Hulk slot. Uh, maybe I should try Magneto, uh, especially if I'm just trying to like make content and farm sweet highlight clips. I do think Red Hulk is probably better overall, and there's a cute interaction with Wave that I showcased in yesterday's video, but Magneto could probably get me some cooler highlight clips for YouTube shorts and stuff. Uh, but I'm still coming up. I, I put out a YouTube short with this video as well today with the featured location because it's actually good with that. The featured location will probably be just about gone by the time this video goes live, but you know, what can you do? And uh, here we are going to Eliath my opponent and then slam the Red Hulk. Of course, they had a rock to throw down into Rickety Bridge, so it doesn't really matter, but Eliath takes out the Silver Sable, the Pym Arrow, and the Rocket Raccoon to mean, again, we beat my opponent in two locations and then tie in the rickety bridge, which would have even been a win as well. So with that five cuber, now we just have to win one of the next three games against my opponent. And this is a fantastic comeback. We were initially down five cubes to my opponent's 10, and now we've mounted a full comeback and we're looking at a five to one game. So pretty fantastic stuff. Kamar Taj as the first location for us in this one. We dodged the Rocket Raccoon with uh, putting the Quicksilver to the right, but my opponent has Quick uh, Silver Sable. Silver Sable on this one. And they hit me with a double shrink, which hits my Psylocke. And Agatha's gonna play that into Kamar Taj. Not ideal, uh, but doesn't really matter too much. We all either draw the Wiccan next turn or we don't. 
realistically. We could also uh, play the wave next turn. We could play wave plus Zabu next turn now. So there are some interesting lines that open up, but we won't be able to play like a turn four Wiccan now, for instance, because we'll have too much energy here. Unless, of course, we draw the Zabu. A lot of different things going on. Not super important. My opponent Nikos to give themselves a demon kind of an interesting play. Um, I forget what they even uh, just demon there, but this game, we also have Mindscape, which, which makes this really interesting. I do get to Jubilee on Kamartage, so two chances to find the Wiccan, which would be really good because getting these cards out of my hand before we switch hands with Mindscape could be really important. My opponent's double Cassandra Nova, though, into Kamartage winds up being pretty backbreaking. It denies me four power, and now I'm losing in Kamartage because of that, and also they get the double Wigan. So instead of us getting to dump our hand, they're going to be able to dump their hand. They only have two cards in it, three after the draw for turn, so they're going to be able to play their entire hand, give us nothing, and then we're going to give them a hand of Agatha and Scar, which it's cool to give them Agatha with Mindscape. That part is cool, but what's awkward is that uh, they're going to have the energy to play both Agatha and Scar on the final turn of the game because Scar is only going to cost four for them uh, and they hit with this Rocket Raccoon. So just annoying all across the board. They Grandmaster and move the Rocket Raccoon to the center, but that's going to move back into Mindscape and there's no way I can beat my opponent in Kamartage and there's no way I can beat them into uh, Strange Academy either. And Agatha doesn't even have any decisions to make. She's just going to play Scar and Agatha and herself into Strange Academy and then I'm going to lose. I guess uh, she could potentially play other cards. She isn't necessarily a lock to play Agatha like she could play the Wave or the Wiccan but either way I've got two arrows and a Zabu and that ain't going to cut it either way you slice it. So I am going to have to, uh, I mean, I could stick in it uh, and play for a turn, but I'm just going to retreat and move on to the next one. I just have to win one of these next two games. So I think it is still very likely that I'm able to do that. My opponent's deck might be more consistent though, whereas my deck is more able to take advantage of weird high rolly situations, things like that. But I think that this deck is consistent too. And that's kind of the point of this video. The, the whole point of this deck is to be a consistent deck and kind of do the same thing every game. Agatha making your deck a little bit smaller. Oh, they got me with the Rocket Raccoon just when I least expected it. Um, yeah, you, you, uh, they just make you forget about the Rocket Raccoon just so they can get you with it again. And here I need to draw a four cost card. Any four cost card will do. I guess, well, I know what I actually wind up drawing and it's not a four cost card, but uh, with the Psylocke here, I would certainly like to draw a four cost card, but what I wind up drawing and it works out pretty well for me here, regardless, is I draw, oh, I draw Coal Obsidian. Oh, I thought I drew, drew Wave. Okay, my bad. I draw Cole Obsidian. There's only one place to go next turn, actually. So I forgot about this. Agatha actually, I mean, Agatha MVP, of course, but she makes a great play here. She plays Wave into Atlantis. Only a one out of six that, that happened. She could have played Wave or Zabu into one of any three different locations, but Wave into Atlantis is so crucial for me here. And you'll see why in just a moment. But now on turn five, I've got control. And this is an easy Agatha into the vault because I don't think my opponent will be able to put 14 power into that location. And vault is to the left this time. It's not like vault is the center location. We've got to worry about Grandmaster funking with me on the final turn. I can just drop Agatha into the vault. I was potentially looking at other... Uh, options because what's interesting here is with this Agatha play, Scar is now free on the final turn of the game and that is why Agatha playing wave specifically center was so crucial because with that plus five power onto wave, 
it gives me a discount on Scar with Silver Sable plus, I don't know why I have trouble saying Silver Sable, but with Silver Sable plus Hit Monkey, we're gonna grab the win in the vault by four power, very, very close. And not only do we have a free Scar, we also have priority on the final turn of the game, which means I get to drop Scar plus Eliath into any location that I deem fit. And there's a few different ways to play this out. My opponent has basic arrow triggers in both of these two remaining locations. So they might like split their power up, but they need to win both of these locations. I've already won the vault. So if I just full commit to Atlantis where I'm already ahead by, well, I'm kind of already ahead by one power. Basic arrow means that I'm a little bit behind, but still 21 power plus an Eliath trigger with priority should be able to get it done here. And indeed it does for a nice final game here. We also locked their acid arrow over with them and we are able to get the win. So there you have it. Which Wiccan deck is better? You'll have to tell me, but for now, Agatha Wiccan Scar is still doing some work. That's going to be it for me today. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm no Lux Given. Peace.